Wow. Oh, look at all these tools. You could build anything in here. Well, if you knew how, you could. So, let's find out. This definitely seems like the place to do it. Cool. I want to learn how all this stuff works. Hey, I'm Abby. And I'm Caleb. And today, we're going on a quest. A quest to get hands on and build fun new skills. We'll visit some cool people and places. Find out all about the Home Depot Kids workshops. Meet a professional woodworker to show us what's up. Learn how to make plans and use tools to put our designs together. And hang out with a brother and sister who proves kids can be makers too. And we'll even learn how to set up our very own workshops at home. So get ready, this is gonna be awesome. Welcome, Welcome to, to our, our virtual field trip. trip. Okay, I for one am fully on board with this mission. DIY skills are super important. Me too. Remind me what DIY is again. Do it yourself. You've heard of that, right? Oh yeah, I've always wanted to be able to do it. I just haven't had much practice. Me neither, yet. That all changes today. Yeah, having DIY skills is super awesome. You get to figure out how to put things together or know how to fix things if they break. You can touch the material, smell the wood, and bang on things with a hammer. It's quite fun, really. Do you really think we can learn to use all these tools? Of course. Even animals know how to use tools. Primates, elephants, sea otters, crows, dolphins, octopi, even some rodents are all absolute tool masters. So we can definitely learn to use them too. I mean, do you really want something that looks like this to be more handier with tools than you are? No, I do not. So what do we need to do to become DIY tool masters too? Practice, mostly. Build up our skills and confidence. And I know just the place to do that. The Home Depot Kids Workshops has been teaching kids to DIY for more than two decades. That sounds like exactly what we need. Let's meet someone who can tell us more. Here at the Home Depot, on the first Saturday of the month, uh, we have our kids' workshops. It's hard to believe, but we've been doing these kits for 25 years now. Hey, I'm Colin, and I used to be a kids' workshop captain in Michigan. As a kids' workshop captain, I'm here to help you along the way as you build kits. I can teach you how to use a hammer, or a screwdriver, or how to apply glue the correct way. No kit is the same, so every month you come, there's something different. Whether you like plants, or cars, or even airplanes, we have kits for that. Over the years, we've made over six million birdhouses. That's a lot of homes for birds. I've been building kits since I was three. When I used to build at the kids' workshops, I would want to challenge myself. Being challenged in different ways helps you think outside of the box. Sometimes things don't go according to plan, and if they don't, we can work on it, and at the end of the workshop, you have something completely unique and different. Making things is important. Being able to create and have that sense of accomplishment, seeing that you built that yourself, and these are also great opportunities to build your science and technology and even math skills. Having built these kits as a kid, I feel really gave me the confidence to solve different problems that I face today. Okay, I definitely need to get my hands on some of those kits and start building. We both do. I just want us to meet one more amazing expert who can show us what's up. A master of material manipulation. A guru of glue. A maven of wooden workshops. Let's drill down and find out more. My favorite part about being a woodworker is one, that I get to do something I'm absolutely passionate about. And then everything that I learn, I get to teach someone else. Are you guys ready to make something today? Yeah! Hi, I'm Shar Miller King, and I am a woodshop teacher and a content creator. One, two, three, one! one. Let's go! I have an interesting story on how I got started working with wood. This was about 20 years ago. I needed a bed, I didn't have the money to buy one. So I thought maybe I could build one, but I didn't know how to build. I got some books from the library and I borrowed some tools from someone and I taught myself how to build my very own bed. 
after making the bed, I decided that I enjoyed making and I enjoyed teaching others how to make. That looks cool, look at that. Trade careers are important. And when you think about the trades, you may think about plumbing, electricians, woodworkers, all those jobs are extremely important because they help our world to keep going. Good job. We'll need people like you to grow up and learn how to do these things and pass that information and that knowledge on to the next generation. Give it to me. One of the most important things that you should know about working with tools is being safe. When I'm in my wood shop, there's three things that I remember all the time. I make sure that I wear special glasses that protect my eyes because sawdust can get in my eyes and it hurts pretty badly. Also, breathing in sawdust can kind of mess with your lungs, so I wear a face mask. And you want to know the worst part is the noise. It can be so loud. So that's why we have to keep our ears safe. So make sure whatever tool you're using, that you are protecting yourself, you talk to an adult, ask them how to safely use the tool, and make sure they're close by to prevent any accidents. <laughs> Hands-on skills are so important. Think about a time that you were maybe building with building blocks and you created something amazing. Making things with your hands will always be important. It pulls out something inside of you maybe that you didn't know it was there and it really builds your confidence. And hopefully that will give you the energy to take it and make something even cooler on the next project. Yay! This year is such a special year because the Home Depot is celebrating its 25th year of kids' workshops. And we had the opportunity to test out a brand new kit. This is what we're going to be making today, little tiny fish tanks. Aren't these cute? The kits that we use today from the Home Depot involve screws and nails and hammers. You always want to start off with the basics. So my suggestion to you would be to start off with something simple. Take your time, really get to learn those things, and then you can start using things like the table saw. There, I'll hold that for you. Even after making for 20 years, I still make mistakes. There are so many inventions out there that took 100 or more tries before it actually worked. So don't ever get down on yourself if it's not perfect the first time. Everybody, no matter how old they are, still makes mistakes. Good job. There's three things that I always tell people. Never give up, follow your dreams, and live life with every fiber of your being. Pour as much of yourself as you can into your passion, into your schoolwork, following directions, and I guarantee you, your hard work will pay off. Hey, Abby. Hey, Caleb. How's it going? Pretty good. Hi. Wow, you guys are doing such an amazing job with these. Thank you. Got my secondary colors, you know? I love yeah, that. Yeah. I love the creativity that's being sparked here. So do you see a future in working with wood? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. 100%. Woodworking is all about problem solving. When you come into an issue, figure out, how do I fix this? Just like anything else in life, and it's about 10% actually woodworking. Mostly <laughs> problem solving. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. you guys are great. Keep up the good work, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the shop some more. Us For too. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. OK, if we're going to keep our skills quest going, we'll need to practice all these new abilities at home. And that means setting up a workspace of our own to build our engineering masterpieces. Your workshop doesn't need to be fully stocked overnight. We're still learning, right? We can collect tools as we need them. Our parents or neighbors may already have what we need anyway, but let's talk about it. First, we'll start with some basic tools. A hammer, of course, a couple of screwdrivers, a crosshead or Phillips head, and a flathead. One should be plenty at first. Wood glue, a few paint brushes, hand saw, different sandpaper from coarse to fine grip. Great for getting rid of splinters. <laughs> a few clamps for holding things in place when gluing or sawing. A selection of screws and nails. Safety glasses and a dust mask, of course. And if you want to get really fancy after a while, and a trusted adult has taught you how to use it safely, 
A power drill and drill bits can help you work a lot faster. Uh, for kids' workshop kits, you'll only need a hammer, a screwdriver, wood glue, and a paintbrush, but other tools will be nice for more advanced DIY projects to work on with your family member or guardian. For now, we're just gonna have our parents help if we use power tools. It makes them feel needed. They like that, don't they? They really do. So, uh, that takes care of the tools. Uh, what about a place to work? We'll cover two quick options. If your family has a garage or basement, those are great places for a workshop. Ask your parents or caregivers to dedicate a small area for you to work. Uh, you won't need a ton of space. You might be able to use an old table or two sawhorses and a piece of plywood as your workbench. Be sure to ask first though, right? Because ruining your mom's heirloom table that you thought was just rickety old junk and being grounded for a month is not fun. Wow, that was a lot. Should we keep going? Sure, uh, if you want to get extra fancy again, uh, your folks could help you mount a pegboard for storing tools so your workspace remains free for working and not storage. No garage? No problem. Just go mobile. Use your backyard or porch or deck. Right, uh, set up sawhorses and some plywood or an old door to make your workbench. Even something like a TV tray can do in a pinch. You can use that old gym bag of yours or backpack you never use anymore to hold your growing set of tools so you're ready to DIY whenever the mood hits you. Just remember those safety tips Char mentioned earlier. Always wear safety glasses when working with power tools. Always clamp wood in place when you're sawing. Be careful. And always be responsible when using any tools. We know you'll do that anyway because you have totally got this, but reminders can't hurt, right? Awesome. Now that we've got our home workshop squared away, all we need are some materials and a good plan. It is very exciting to have, you know, so many people come together. When you have one goal, you can actually create something beautiful. Hi, my name is Kiyomi Summers. I'm a head of design for Houseworks. Houseworks, we design, source, and ship kits for the Kids Workshop program to all the Home Depot stores in the U.S. and Canada. Do we want to offer no tool? This whole design process is really a team effort. So um, some of us here uh, at Houseworks and also the manufacturer in Thailand. So everybody pitch in and then uh, come up with all those ideas. You know, looking at some photos to have some sort of um, inspiration. All the kits we make here, we always think of two things. Uh, one is for utility, which, you know, how you can use after you made this. So like an organizer, you can put on the desk and you can put your stuff in it. Or, or play, so just a game, you know, you can play with your friend. Once we uh, have these approved kits, then we can actually start uh, getting prototypes to make sure that it's simple enough and it does make sense. All our kids I made in Thailand, and now I'm really excited for you to meet William, and he can tell you all about how the kits are manufactured. Thank you, Kiyomi. Hello, everyone. I'm William Wang, Managing Director and Chief Designer of Kit and Kids Woodworks in Thailand. We have around 120 workers working here. We build this factory specifically for Home Depot to make the kits for the kids' workshop. We try to come out with different kinds of designs. Uh, we will come out with a 3D drawing. Each of the drawings need to be carefully uh, worked out with mass so that the parts can be precisely assembled. This is a new design. When designing the kits, the engineering skills required to make sure that the structure is strong and safe and also to prevent mistakes from happening during uh, assembly. When we design a kit, we always need to look at the number sizes so that we will get the maximum number of cuts from the same pieces of wood. Apart from the parts that are made of wood, we will try to pack all the other non-wood accessories together so that when the kids get the pack, they can start doing their own uh, project. Every year, we make about six million kits in our factory. And the whole process from design to finish will be about one year. 
So each kit includes the material to build those kits and instructions and certificate and then pins that you can actually put on your apron. Um, so you know, each time you go to workshop, you can actually collect them. I believe you actually have more sense of accomplishment actually using your hand. I'm doing this for over 20 years, but it never really um, get old to see the kids really enjoying themselves at the workshop. Seeing them so happy that they actually made something um, and they're showing off with the pins and the certificate, that's really special to me. Okay, we've got our tools and the know-how to plan and build projects. Now let's check in with a couple of our friends in California who love DIY just as much as we do for some final inspiration. Eight years ago, we started going to Home Depot and getting these kids crafts. We had really nothing to do on Saturdays and my mom was like, hey, let's try this. On the first Saturday of each month, we go to the Home Depot and we get our crafts. Hello, can we get our kids' crafts? Thank you. Mason? Mason Thank you. We build in our backyard with our friends and also just each other. It's equally as fun. My favorite tool to use is the hammer. Because you get to put force on it and let's say you're having a bad day, smash that nail in, get all your anger out. After that is like relief. Like, let's say you had like a pile of homework, like you just got it done. That's how I feel like. We do have instructions to read so that we don't mess up. But if we do mess up, it's okay. <laughs> well, the reason why I like to participate in the kids' workshop is because it's a fun experience to have with your friends and family, and you get to learn important details in building different crafts. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's really nice. After I completed a kit, I feel really good about myself because I know that I accomplished something. Well, my favorite kit was the ATM. You could put your coins through here and your dollar bills up here actually did look like a real ATM. It was really cool. My favorite kit that I made is this green army truck. I like military stuff, so this really made me happy that Home Depot made this project. Another one that I want to show you guys is this one. You may be thinking, well, what is this? Binoculars. I have taken these skills to build my own desk in my room. I've learned how to hammer or screw in and to never give up. Keep on going until you finish that goal. It's so much fun to be able to see that pin on your apron. Each pin means that you've done a different craft and over the years you can get a star badge and each of the star badges are an achievement that you've made. Woohoo! Good job, buddy. Congratulations. I've done over 90 kids crafts. I have built over a hundred kids workshop kits. I'm trying to catch up to my sister to reach a hundred pins. I don't think he could do it. Well, we already know who won. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna come right out and admit something, all right? I kind of thought you had to be grown up to do DIY projects, but clearly that's not true. Not at all. No one should feel like we have to wait until we're older or out of school or anything. We can take on projects right now. You know what else is cool? My parents don't even do DIY projects, so I'm gonna set up a workspace at home and show them how it's done. Sweet, my aunt is actually pretty handy. I think I'm gonna ask her if I can help sometimes. Maybe she'll loan me some of her tools for my own project. It's smart. You know, we spend so much time doing things digitally or virtually these days that I'm loving doing things with my hands and with real materials for a change. And I'm loving the idea of learning to make or repair things ourselves. Way better for the planet than just using and throwing away all the time. No doubt. You know, this little skill quest has been a lot of fun. But now we'd really like to get back to work. We have a long way to go if we're ever going to catch up to Madison and Mason. Right, but before we go, we'd like to thank the Home Depot for making today's virtual field trip possible. 
And we especially want to thank Colin Bauer, Char Miller King, Kiyomi Summers, William Wang, and Madison and Mason for helping us understand DIY doesn't need to feel intimidating. These skills are for everyone. To keep building those skills, be sure to visit sciencefairessential.com. You'll find a toolbox full of great resources there like kids' workshop extension activities, STEM projects for home or school, videos like this one, and a whole lot more. And don't forget you can pick up free kids' workshop kits on the first Saturday of every month at any of the Home Depot stores in your area and help them celebrate the 25th anniversary of the program. So remember, keep learning, keep doing, Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>